end of the month, always a busy time for the music school. I uh, figured I'm coming into the school, do some last minute billing, right? I don't know why I'm telling you this, but I come into the school, do last minute billing. I'm in the car, I'm listening to the Manhattan Transfer, a song called Move, a uh, great song, and I'm listening to it, and, and I get to the school and I think, I gotta do that perk video. So uh, I'm not sure why the Manhattan Transfer uh, gave me uh, the inspiration to do the perk YYZ film, but you just never know. All right, the Pert Phil, quick and easy. All right, couple things, though. Uh, last week, I was looking at the Pert Phil, and uh, I, I do my sticking different, okay? So Pert, uh, I, I don't know, he, I, I, I imagine he does double strokes sometimes, but he doesn't do it too much, I don't think. Um, and he doesn't improv too much uh, from listening to him over the years. So um, he, he does the, this is the first YYZ Phil, right? It's uh, just a... Some 30-second notes mixed with 16th notes. That's all it is. Um, and, uh, you know, he does it, obviously, around the drums, and, and it sounds real cool. Uh, so a student wants to know how to do that, and I showed him, and, he, and, and, and I did these double strokes, and he said he saw them online, and he didn't seem to be doing double strokes, and I said he probably wasn't doing double strokes. So uh, so my version's with double strokes, but then I, interesting, I, I, I looked through some books, some interesting things. First of all, books are wrong. Uh, not, not always, but um, uh, there's one book that has him playing 16th note triplets, right? Um, pretty famous uh, uh, um, uh, publishing company. Totally wrong. He's not playing 16th note triplets. Okay, so he, um, uh, and then I have another uh, tr uh, transcription where they have probably the, probably the accurate one with the 30-second notes. But they do have something um, that... I, I, I think is probably wrong, even in that transcription. So as I watched him play his fill in a lot of different, you know, they got the camera up above and they got the camera all over. Uh, and I watched some other guy explain it. And, um, you know, there's no shortage of videos on this fill. But I watched him. Uh, and I, one thing I know for sure is a couple of them are definitely wrong. Uh, because of the sticking that they use. It, it, it can't be right. Because Pert does his fill. And basically, they're trading these one-bar phrases, right? Getty Lee plays the bass part, Pert plays the drum part. They go back and forth. The first two are one-bar fills, and the second one is a two-bar fill, right? Getty plays two-bar uh, of a, of a uh, fill, a, uh, a little solo on the bass, and then uh, Pert plays his two-bar fill. Okay, and, and the, the, they do it, and then they come, they come right back in on one, okay? So the sticking I'm going to have up on the screen somewhere, okay, is, is the sticking that I'm going to play. Now, interestingly, the sticking that, the, I, I think a really good video to watch for you people who want to do it um, exactly the, with the perch sticking, which is just alternating, he does, he does, they play YYZ in a Buddy Rich Memorial video. So Perk's playing this little four-piece drum set, right? And they're playing YYZ, and I think Joe, Pat LaBarbera, or Joe LaBarbera, um, uh, did the, um, uh, wrote the tune for the big band, or orchestrated the tune. So um, they've got this big band. But the Perk parts, because he doesn't improv much, are pretty much identical to what he always plays. So it's a good angle, and, and, and it's a good way of seeing him play it. Now, he doesn't have all the drums to orchestrate, right? That's for sure. But rhythmically, he plays it basically the same. So, um, so I'm going to play it. The way I play it is with double strokes, okay? Um, and, and it starts off with these 30-second notes. One E and a, two E and a, three E and a, four E and a, one. Okay? One E. Um, or instead of counting it like that, which can get a little convoluted as you play it, you could think in my uh, playing, I, when I always played it, and I played it over the years in bands, I always just counted the, the double strokes, right? Uh, and there's five of those uh, for the most part. There's, I play six of them sometimes, but not always. And that's one of the differences also. And I'll talk about that later. So one... So that's basically, now, if you play it, you can do that too, right? Um, if you play it uh, around the drums. But 
Um, so either way, it doesn't matter, okay? So he plays this thing, um, this open hi-hat thing beforehand, and then he plays the fill. And most people don't have all those drums, so you do the best, do the best you can with, uh, with the drums that you have, right? But you could still orchestrate it and make it sound good. So, um, so my version, uh, we'll take it after the Getty Lee part, because I don't have Getty here today. Uh, and I don't have Jeff Berlin here either, because in the big band version, Jeff Berlin plays the bass part, and Jeff Berlin's bass parts are so cool, maybe because we've heard Gettys for 30 years, but and Jeff Berlin does not play the same thing that Getty Lee plays, but his, his two-bar one just made me giggle. It's just so cool. He does this slide thing up the... And Jeff Berlin is just a monster bass player. So actually, a uh, uh, quick fact uh, for those who are huge Pert fans, you know, Pert didn't do a lot of session work or anything like that. But on Jeff Berlin's record, boy, I don't remember if it was Champion, maybe? I'm not sure. But on a Jeff Berlin solo record, there's a double drum track with Steve Smith and Neil Pert. Uh, and it's pretty cool. And I forget the name of the track. Uh, maybe some of you folks out there that know it. But it's just kind of a cool, obscure track. Uh, Jeff Berlin, I think Jeff Berlin actually subbed for Getty Lee once. That's another thing when he was sick or something. I think Jeff Berlin did something. That could be wrong, but I seem to remember something like that. Um, but anyway, Jeff Berlin's solo album has Pert, I think, on the right side and Steve Smith on the left side for this double drum track uh, way back from in the, I don't know, the 80s or something. Someone will know. Okay, anyway, so uh, my version of the fill is something like this, right? One, two, three, four. right there's not a lot of movement right and a lot of times when people do it with the with the single they have this big kind of thing going so mine looks kind of i don't know it looks different because i just sort of play it and it's like well where what happened how'd you do so there's a little i've had some people come up to me uh, after one show i remember at uh where was it i think it was at the goose island brewery in uh wrigleyville uh I could be wrong about that. Maybe it was at the. Yeah, it doesn't matter where it was. Okay. Anyway, we did we did it, and someone said, "Oh, that fill was cool, but it 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 sounded a little different." And I showed him how I did it, and he kind of liked it. And anyway, rhythmically, absolutely correct. Except one thing to pay attention to. So starting on beat four, when you watch the Pert one when he's playing it with the big band. Let me get this up here. When he plays it. Now, maybe he always plays it this way, although this is not the notation and this is not how a lot of guys show it online. Maybe he always plays it this way. But for the big band fill, he plays it like this. He just plays four sixteenth notes at the end. So he plays... He plays the the thirty second notes. He plays four of them, and then which which leads to his sticking because he's always alternating his sticking comes right into four. Okay, so that is definitely the sticking he does with the big band. It's uh, if you want to play it with an alternate sticking, my sticking would be. have to do the double with your left um, at the end. You can just play a single. Okay? And if you do what it looks like Pert's doing, at least from a very good angle, which is kind of like right here, uh, from the big band video, it's... So either one of those, either one of those are going to get you to crash with your right hand. And remember, the main thing is that he definitely comes in on one. So, um, yeah. 
So if he if he's alternating, right, and he's playing his sticking, da 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 there's your left hand, right? One is with your left, but he doesn't play one with his left off. Oh, he doesn't do that, right? So he usually comes out with the right hand, which means something's going on at the end where he's probably not doing that 30-second note. And he's definitely not doing double strokes like I am. So I don't know, but I think maybe a key to the puzzle is watching that big band video. So again. Whichever sticking you want to use, as long as make sure you crash on one and generally with your right. Now, you don't have to crash with your right hand. Do the sticking and crash with your left hand. Who cares, right? Uh, the, bit, the main thing is as long as you crash on one. It doesn't matter. But if you crash on the uh, um, like a couple people I saw online doing uh, got with their sticking, just because the sticking lines up that way, uh, you're going to be in trouble, right? going to come in early, I should say. So you're either going to come in early uh, or you're going to crash with your left hand. So work with the stickings, my sticking with the doubles again. You could do the double at the end or you could play a single. Or you can do the YYZ big band uh, uh, um, example where Pert plays it. Just the four sixteenths on the end. Either way, it doesn't really uh, matter. The sticking makes no difference, right? Uh, the main thing is that the, the biggest thing is when you play that big fill and the whole band stops and you play that fill, you better hit one, right, when the rest of the band comes in. Because if you come in on the 16th note before one, train wreck time. to do that for sure. Okay, so uh, I didn't put my, I guess I was supposed to put these on because my ears are going to ring now, but I didn't do it. Hey, back with the regular drums. It's been like uh, a long time. So uh, I think the last time I was here, I did the bottom fill. So, uh, okay, like and subscribe and all that stuff. Uh, my last video, really, if you didn't watch it, you need to go back and watch the right hand lead video because that video is really a foundational video for, for really helping your playing and, and really giving you a lot of, uh, a lot of value, a lot of uh, independence with really a fairly simple exercise. So work on that. So that's the part. Why don't I do the other two fills to YYZ? Because those fills, I think, are pretty easy. Um, I mean, this fill's pretty easy when you think about it. Um, they're all pretty easy, but this one for some, why, why? One of the main reasons is because one of my students asked me to do the video on the first fill. So, um, but the other ones, and when I looked in some of the books, because I have three different books uh, that have the transcriptions, uh, again, one of them totally wrong with the first one. The second one was also wrong with the first transcription. Uh, the third one, I think, had it pretty right, although I think, I think the sticking is, is not correct. But the, 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 the second and the third fill, I think, are pretty accurate in the other books also, if you follow along with that. But uh, certainly don't play these as trip 16th note triplets. Nothing, it definitely doesn't sound like this. Okay, so that is definitely not what's happened. Okay, so don't play them as triplets. If you've been playing them as triplets, you're playing them wrong. However, the second fill, I believe, uh, our triplets. So there you go. So then uh, maybe you just played it a little early. So practice, practice, practice. 
Uh, next video, I'm doing. I'm gonna do. I got two. I got. I'm gonna do another sort of a a, a part B to the right hand lead. We're gonna talk a lot about long and short notes uh, and how to interpret those notes and things like that. Again, with the Ted Reed book. Uh, to keep you moving forward with that because that's a book to a lifelong book again so that's going to be a good uh, a great video and then I'm going to do a cool grouping of five thing that I heard on a CD by Alan Holdsworth and Frank Bally called Truth and Shredding great CD I think it's who's it? it's either Gary Husband or Tom Breckline I think it's Tom Breckline on drums great drummer and they do this cool part where they're 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 doing these crazy solos and they do this section where um, everyone does these unison groupings of five. Really easy, but man, does it sound cool. So I'm going to do that. That's another quick one. So there you go. YYZ. Hope you liked it. Um, and try the double strokes. Um, it's, it looks kind of effortless. It flows. And uh, it'll get people asking, hey, man, how did you do that? Because it's not the uh, typical way to do it. But uh, I think it sounds pretty cool. And it really is super effortless with the doubles and you just sort of play and you're done and boom and you're on your way so um so there you go practice 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 like subscribe all that stuff there's a bell or something i don't know all right back to billing end of the month and uh and then on the way home some more manhattan transfer hey you know what i mean uh